very much. Um, it's really a pleasure for me to be here and to join my friends, including uh, ex-students and Liz, um, to introduce to you our concept of where art and science are really very much alike. Often the lay public thinks that if you're a scientist, you're some kind of hard-nosed, mathematically oriented, uh, super logical individual, and if you're a artist, you have no logic and you are uh, moving around in, a, in an aesthetic world. Well, as you well know, that's totally untrue. Um, uh, artists are very logical people, um, and the key to our, the similarities is we seek freedom through mastery. You can't do free form unless, in music unless you really are masters of the technique. And in science, you can't discover unless you really are masters of your field. In music, we have patterns as well. And this is, again, the similarity that we have between art and science. For example, the, in jazz, uh, the simplest uh, motif is the blues, uh, blues progression, which is really only three chords. It's one, four, one, five, four, one. Very, very, very simple. Now from that, we can elaborate. It's science and art has some really fundamental acts. Um, the fundamental acts in creativity is always to sense, right? An artist cannot not sense. You have to absorb their environment and all the beauty in your environment. The second is, as an artist, you want to imagine. Um, you imagine, as Picasso or Degas would imagine, not just what is reality, but what the reality could be. Um, and finally, you create. Um, you, you take that imagination and put it to either print, you put it to, on a canvas, or you, you put it in music. And finally, you want to marvel. You step back after you complete it and say, wow, that really feels good. Or to your colleague, that's a great painting, or that's a fantastic song. And you feel the hair on your back rise when you, uh, when you hear that. In science, it's really the same. When we sense, we say, we measure, we detect. As you know, you teach your science, uh, your science students, the first thing about science, you have to measure accurately. The second is you take all those measurements and you model to predict. Remember I told you, we never, uh, Copernicus never saw the Earth going around the sun, but he made a model of where, what the universe could be based on the data, the measurements that he took in. Then we can now, in many ways, construct to create um, there's a model for how a bridge should function. And for us, we actually create new organisms. And finally, once it's done, like artists, we look, stand back, and marvel at our own creations, or we marvel and honor those who did extraordinarily well. As biologists, we like to create something from nothing, if we possibly can. We've moved biology from a purely observational science to one that we can actually manipulate DNA, manipulate DNA, put it back into a cell, manipulate DNA, put it back in an organism, and change the phenotype of an organism, or the appearance of an organism. And, um, and in every single case, we, uh, whether it's art or science or music, we have building blocks. And there's some fundamental building blocks in genetics. It doesn't get any smaller, doesn't get any better than the four bases in genetics, A, T, C, G. And these are combined to create an infinite number of species. Now, the DNA um, and genetics is the fundamental of all biology, because if you think about it, what, are, what is the basis of a living creature? A living creature replicates, mates, or divides. That's, that's a principal requirement. The second, living creatures evolve. And the third, all living creatures evolve because of changes in their genetic code, whether it's DNA or RNA. There is no exception to this. And this, uh, this cycle of changes of the genetic code as they mate and divide is the basis of evolution. And from that evolution, we've created four bases of constantly evolving and uh, a phenomenal array of species. 